Welcome to my latest uh, custom and modifications uh, video. I've seen a few people have made modifications to Barricade from Transformers by adding uh, flashing lights to the figure uh, and I thought it looked pretty good but the ways uh, that they've gone about it seem to be quite expensive and quite long-winded so I thought I'd see if I could do there was a cheaper option and an easier way of adding uh, flashing lights to Barricade. So I recently picked up a couple of uh, second-hand Barricades off eBay. Uh, this is a uh, Barricade from the Dark of the Moon movie uh, and the one on the right here this is from the original uh, Transformers movie I thought I'd pick up both just to see uh, which ones would give me the best option for customizing uh, and now that I have both in hand it looks like uh, actually the original barricade is probably going to be the best one to do uh, as you can see here you can clearly see there's quite a lot of space uh, under the lighting section uh, of uh, the top part of Barricade uh, for sort of fitting some electronics and that. Uh, if you look at the Dark of the Moon Barricade there's not so much space, a lot of the uh, sort of body parts uh, get sort of pushed up into that uh, that head section there so um, you're just there's just not going to be enough uh, space to add any electronics in there. Uh, if I put them side by side like this you'll notice that it's considerably smaller uh, there's just not enough space in that one so uh, that one I'm going to leave for the moment so we're going to deal with the original barricade that came out uh, for the first Transformers movie uh, now I've looked around and uh, lights seem to be uh, sort of fairly cheap to buy but you end up you know got to have sort of battery bits and uh, wiring and in the end you'll end up spending sort of a, a reasonable amount of money getting some uh, electronics to put inside it so a slight bit of sideways thinking I picked up this uh, rubber ball I actually bought it for my cat but he doesn't like it um, looks a bit rubbish but if you tap it you'll notice it has inside it flashing blue uh, and red lights it also has a sensor on it so you don't need to have a switch you just have to tap it to switch the lights on so uh, this shouldn't hopefully mean that I can take the uh, wiring and lights and bits out of this fit it here and I won't have to have a switch to switch it on I'll just be able to tap the top of the car uh, like I do here uh, and the lights will come on so uh, first thing to do is to cut this open and we'll have a look and see what the lights look like inside it And so you can see here we have the uh, lights and batteries that are inside that ball. It's a fairly small little setup. You've got two LED lights uh, and there's a spring loaded uh, switch there. So it's a spring inside a little metal tube and when you tap it the spring moves and it touches the side and that triggers the light. So if I just uh, tap this there you go, the lights are firing off. So uh, this looks perfect. This should uh, easily be able to be mounted inside uh, the top section here. What I'll need to do is uh, unsolder the lights uh, and uh, sort of add some wire to them so that I can move them into uh, the correct position but I think this should work perfectly so uh, let's go ahead uh, and take a barricade apart and see what we can do. Now that I've got these uh, lights removed I need to take uh, the barricade toy apart and uh, remove this top panel so that I can work on it uh, separately so uh, uh, the easiest thing to do I guess is just to transform this and see which bits I can remove uh, and it should be fairly straightforward looks like I can get uh, the most of that top panel off so I'm just going to uh, pull all the pieces off and we'll just separate this panel so here we have just the top section and luckily the uh, lights are held on with screws so I can just unscrew uh, the two screws that hold it on uh, and take that lighting section off which uh, makes it nice and easy. I was expecting it to be glued on and I'd have to sort of snap it off but uh, screwed on is, uh, makes it a much easier job. So now I should just be able to ping those lights off uh, and that's perfect actually. Uh, that uh, leaves quite a good sort of top here. What I can do is just uh, drill these holes out slightly larger and I should be able to fit the LEDs through uh, and then make some minor modifications to uh, this lighting section. I reckon if I can uh, again carefully cut off uh, these two larger prongs here I can then just uh, mount this directly on top of the two LEDs uh, on top there and it uh, should light up quite nicely so I think the first thing to do is to modify uh, these lights here I'm going to have to uh, unsolder the LEDs and attach them to small bits of wire so that I can uh, position them sort of into the two holes uh, uh, and then I think once that's done I can then mount this uh, the battery section sort of on the top of the 
just on the top of the roof like that with a couple of wires coming out to each uh, light uh, and that should then work quite nicely. So here we have the two LEDs removed. It's not the easiest of jobs to do. It's a bit of a fiddly thing because the uh, solder joints are very small and you've got to unsolder two pegs at once, but it is possible. So now I can take these uh, two little LEDs here um, and if I bring in the top of the vehicle, as you can see here, uh, I want to mount these in uh, the plastic so that they come through the roof. So at the moment the hole uh, is just a bit too small, so I'm going to drill that out um, and then I can mount these two LEDs in those holes that they're just sitting slightly proud at the top there uh, and then I can uh, get all the wiring in place so let's go ahead and drill these holes so you can see here I now have uh, space to fit the LED uh, neatly uh, through the hole uh, and if I get the light section this still uh, just about fits on the top there. Uh, by the time I've modified that a bit and drilled some extra holes in it, um, that should fit on quite nicely. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to uh, attach some wires to these LEDs so that I can uh, get them glued in place and then I can reattach them to the circuit board. So here we have the two LED lights. I've soldered some wires onto them and currently just pushed them into the two holes that I've made. Uh, I'm making sure that they're the same way round as they were originally because it seems like a barricade is supposed to have a red light uh, next to the number six and a blue light next to the number three. So uh, I'm going to try and keep it uh, in that sort of order uh, if I possibly can. So now that these uh, LEDs are in place, I'm actually just going to put a little bit of glue so that they're stuck there and don't fall out. Uh, and then once that's done, I can then uh, see what I can do about attaching uh, let me just get at the uh, small amount of electronics here. I'm going to see, uh, I'm going to attach the wires back onto the bottom and then glue this in place, um, sort of very uh, well, just, uh, just about there, so that I can still access the battery compartment if I want to change the batteries. Um, so it's going to be a fairly fiddly job because it's uh, quite a small um, uh, amount of, uh, well, there's a small amount of space really, so uh, it's going to be a little bit awkward, but should be easy enough to do with uh, some patience. So here we have uh, the two LEDs in place and I've, so I'm just holding uh, the bit of circuitry underneath uh, just to show you how it works. If I now tap this um, thing, as you can see, the lights now come on and flash. So there's no need for a switch. You can just use the little uh, jog mechanism to start the lights off and they'll flash for uh, about 20 seconds and then stop. So uh, that looks like it's going to work quite nicely. And if I just hold uh, in place the lights, uh, I've not actually modified these and get that going again. You can see that they work quite nicely. Um, it's going to work pretty effectively. Uh, I've just got to work out a way to uh, modify these and so they can still ha sort of hold in place. If I switch my desk lamp off, like so, and then uh, jog the little switch again, you can see that they do light up pretty well. So I think this is going to look really good when I'm finished. So I've, uh, next job is I'm just going to glue the circuitry in place uh, and then I'll work out how I can fit these lights back on. So here we have uh, the lights in place and the batteries are now glued in place. Uh, currently it's fairly hard to set off the switch. I can modify that slightly. Uh, you just have to bend a couple of the contacts. So at the moment uh, to set the lights off you can see it's, I actually have to tap it quite hard like that and then the lights come on. Uh, so it does work, it's just a little bit uh, too sensitive. Uh, so I'll fix that in a minute. But so first off I need to uh, reattach these uh, sort of cop lights to the top of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slightly drill out um, the two pegs here so that they uh, line up um, perfectly with the top of that. And then I think I'm, I am going to use one of those craft pads just to stick these lights in place so that they're slightly raised up because uh, there's a nice silver bit in the middle. Um, so by the time I've screwed, uh, drilled everything out of the way, those should fit on quite nicely. And then I'll modify the sensitivity of the switch and that should be the job done. So here you can see I've drilled out uh, very carefully the two sort of pegs. 
And it turns out I don't even need to uh, glue this back on because I've uh, carefully drilled these out. They are now the exact same size as the LED, so this actually holds in place pretty well if I just push it on uh, to the LED like that. Like so you'll see it actually stays in place, so uh, that's pretty good. Right, I'm now going to go and just modify the switch so that it's a little bit, little bit more less sensitive, and uh, this should be all finished. And here we have it, the finished barricade. As you can see, it looks pretty much just like it did originally. You can just about see the batteries in the front there. And now if I tap it, the lights come on. So that's uh, pretty cool. It now looks like a cop car. Uh, it still transforms perfectly. You end up with a little bit of a, a, a bulky bit in the back when he transforms. But uh, to be honest, this figure already had a, a bulky, bulky section on the back of him anyway. But as you can see, that works perfectly. So I just tap the car again and his lights come on. So no need for a switch or anything like that. It's just done by tapping the car. That's a, a pretty cool conversion. And total cost uh, was uh, £1.30, which was to buy the uh, rubber ball with flashing lights in it. Uh, and it works perfectly. So um, uh, there's a cheap way of customising a barricade uh, Transformers figure. Uh, ideal if you just want to do a simple job on it. And it really is effective. The lights make this uh, vehicle look so much better. Thanks for watching.